deux, trois groupes dans le premier milieu. Roll call, all council members are present. And you just let me know when it's your turn, I guess. So. All right, well, I will take over. Right. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening, council members. So this evening, we are at goal setting. Um, I'm going to read what I have included in your packet just to familiarize yourselves again, because um, we only do this once a year, what the purpose and the goal is of this meeting. So it's been our practice for many years. I have gone back through at least 20, 2005 that we've conducted an annual goal setting work session. It allows all of us to come together, the council members, staff members, department head members, uh, to look at the city's current initiatives and practices, the future state of our city, establish goals balancing workload and demand with available resources, and action to obtain desired outcomes. The planning process includes discussion on development, where we are at, and where we are going, to, going followed by discussions for implementation of how we will get there and how staff can help achieve the council get those goals. So the purpose of this meeting today is to develop a consensus for our top priorities for 2023 and to also provide direction to staff on the 2023 to 24 budget principles and develop a work plan which provides direction to staff for not only this year but going on to the, into the future. For example, if it was long-term desire of council to have a, a large facility like a, I don't even know, like a hockey arena or something like that, in 20 years, you wanna see that in our city. This is the kind of meeting to bring that to, um, to see if even beyond your terms, um, what visions do you have for the city that staff can help start planning for as we've um, all worked together to unify, to save money for our expenditures instead of bonding. That takes a lot of forecasting those visions farther out than we normally would have to if we were a city that bonded for our projects, we could do them faster. Um, so we just have to do a lot more pre-planning um, included in this packet is I have CIP projects, I have um, our um, approved plans that we go off of as staff, also our 23, 24, 25 CIP major purchases, um, and then the, some of the items for discussion that have been provided to me prior to printing the agenda. If you have items that you did not get to me but you wanna add to the discussion, we'll also have, make time for those at the end of the itemized list that we have. Included in your packet is the mission, vision, and core values that the city has set. And we use those as staff um, as our guiding principles for how we spend our time and our available resources. Going on to our first memo, uh, these are our existing council approved plans and ongoing plans. Our comprehensive plan in 2020, was, that was an update. We have a water, sewer, storm infrastructure plan that was originally um, set in place in 2007. Since we've had the CIP, that those items are incorporated into that. We have a comprehensive park plan that was updated in 2022. Our capital improvement plan, we update that annually. That is forecasting all of our expenditures out at least 20 years. Pavement management plan, that was adopted in 2014 and we are working through those. We also have those um, light end out within our annual budget cycle too. Our storm maintenance plan originally was set in place in 2017. Our stormwater pollution prevention plan, again in 2017. Our wellhead protection plan is going through its update right now. It's past part one and we have part two in progress. Our water supply plan has to be done every 10 years. It was last done in 2018. Our asset management plan for wastewater and, and water was in 2014. Those items have all been incorporated into our CIP. Utility rate study was done in 2021, and we do those every few years. Our Sandy County All Hazard Plan, Mitigation Plan, um, that was last done in 2015, that is currently in progress. Water Emergency Response Plan was completed in 2021. Our Wastewater Emergency Response Plan was completed in 2021. Emergency Operations Plan is in progress, and our NPDES permit was last updated in 2020, and that needs to be done every five years. Any questions on those before we move on? All right, the next memo, uh, D3, these are our 2022 goals and progress summary for what we had discussed as a council and in leadership of last year. It was a goal to have a dynamic sign. Uh, the status of that is we have allocated $10,000 for hopeful land acquisition of this year, and then it will be continued ongoing discussions of when we'll implement the actual sign. Employee retention is an ongoing discussion, 
it's been the desire of council and our leadership here to make sure that we retain our great employees. Whiskey sidewalk infill, that does have continued ongoing discussions uh, last that we talked about. Um, there was hopes that maybe the county would be able to do something since it's in the county right away along Whiskey there, but no action's been taken by the county nor um, do we have any progress to report on that. Council chamber modifications for safety was completed and that was the tinting of the glass um, on, in our windows. Growing our industrial development, a completed plat of our new lots. So we did fill all of our industrial lots off of um, uh, East Dula, Sandy Parkway area, and we did implement them off of Third Avenue up by the soccer complex, those four, and uh, recently went through um, EDA to sell to um, Midco. Um, established a redevelopment district. Further directions needed. Staff did not take on this initiative yet. Um, it's something that Stephanie and Ms. Hillesheim is familiar with um, that she has done in other communities. It does take some funding and some time, so we have not spent any on that yet, as well as the age-friendly city designation. Um, we have not done that yet at this time. Future Bluebird Park amenities. So it has been the desire of the council over the last few years to have more of um, a Mecca park instead of having smaller um, neighborhood parks. Uh, the Amphitheater and Illuminate Isani event was completed last year. Increased social media presence was completed, so we did add Facebook um, social media presence. We did have um, the parks page as well as farmers market, but then we were able to add a city page um, where we can get more information, out, including our agendas and where to find or yeah, our agendas and where to find our packets. And then the liquor store and also the police department was added. Reorganization of the Planning Commission. This was discussed to have more uh, members at large. The, there was consensus not to pursue it at that time. City-owned land across the river. It was recently discovered um, at last year, about this time, that the city does own a sliver of land on the other side of the bridge. Nothing's been done at this time for that. Any questions about our 2022 goals? I do have a couple on that. Uh, so the establish a redev redevelopment district. Can you give me like a rundown on what that is? Like a, I know you said Stephanie was working on that, but what does that mean? Um, part of it, there can be many different things that go along with it. Part of it can be um, this establishing using funds that are allocated for such things as having a grant program that can help um, your downtown area become revitalized. Um, the city contributing into people even updating houses that are in like a main corridor that we feel are, is the eye of the city as people drive through, different things like that. Okay. And then uh, the age-friendly city designation, what does that consist of? Is that like ADA stuff and? Um, that one I believe is being more um, age-friendly from all the way from young toddlers all the way up to our senior population. I know that there are other funding opportunities the city can get if we are designated through that. I believe it's through AARP who maybe started it and she would be able to give more information on that. Um, there are certain um, walkability things that you have to have, connected trails, um, different initiatives that you would take on that uh, can work for a wide range of age of, of population within your community. Um, I think the benefit that she had uh, us participating in something like that would be additional dollars we can tap into that we wouldn't be able to. As far as that city owned land across the river, I don't see us ever getting sewer and water over there. It'd be a nightmare. Well, Is there, what's that? It's just a little sliver, sliver. but why don't. Basically, canoe access, that's all it is. Is there any way we could? Grant it back to DNR or get rid of it, so we don't have to deal with this anymore. I'd be we didn't look into any options actually at this this time. We we didn't allocate time to that. I mean, it's something we can keep on the radar um, when we have some available time. I don't know if it harms us any way to leave it there. I think that if we did have enough, I mean, over time there might be some development on the other side that might kind of creep up towards. And I know that the city of Princeton had looked at providing services across their river. So definitely. Cities do it, um, they, they do haven't it. done it yet, but that's why um, Ms. Hillisheim is familiar with going across a river to get services, and I don't think we're near close at this time, but to leave it there just because, I don't think it hurts the city. It would be hard to get it back. <coughs> well, I agree, yeah. but 
<clears throat> then my next thing is <clears throat> the industrial park, and I think uh, Councilman Gordon stayed, stayed on the same page with, me with that. I don't feel the city should own any of that land. I think we should see if we can't look at getting some kind of program to help them sell that property, send, send them that way rather than us owning property and sitting on it for years. We'd rather have that be on a tax roll base than us buying land to, and then Mer and uh, Councilman We Merrill. did talk last year, Councilmember Lynn did about purchasing land over by Knife River and things. Yep. We did not move forward with any of that. The no. lots that we created were on our own land because they decided not to sell. They weren't interested in selling. So, but we I just, I just anymore. don't think that it's kind of a double-edged sword. You, you kind of need something to bring in industry and commercial business in. But yet on the second side of that, we sit on a piece of property and then we turn around and give it to them for a dollar, which is a great program. And there's funding that comes through for that, but it's still in the eyes of the general public, it's their tax dollars at work. I think if we were to do it, I think with the land that we already, we got that industrial park that's moving forward with Midco being the first people in there, um, there's there's quite a bit of space there for some more. I mean, I, I mean, I'm because it was it came up as us buying more land because we were filling it, and I just don't feel that we necessarily need to buy any more land. Right. The only the one thing we lack now is retail shovel ready lots. Yep. That yeah. is what we lack. And there that is the benefit of if the city does own lots or the EDA owns lots, we can offer incentives of things that if we if the infrastructure is there. If we don't own any of the lots, we can't help anyone come in who would be a great business or, a, you know, Restaurants restaurant to come in here. You can't whatever. help them out if you don't own the land. That's yeah. the flip side. And a lot of those restaurants are looking for incentives because they yeah, know they, they need can them. get them. They need them. At other That's cities. That's problem. Because they're just not going to, it's, I, I, lack of better words, I go to people's every Saturday. It's the same people every day seven days a week and they took off from Christmas till after the first of the year because <clears throat> they needed a vacation they need to get away from this they can't get help and when they do get help people's like well oh, shit people or people are like I can go get more money on welfare than I'm working so it's so it just doesn't help us any and it and it doesn't help those businesses I'm sure calls or, you know, mayor Gordon's probably suffered trying to find people the right people too at times you know, you. <laughs> but they're still building. <laughs> they are. Fast food restaurants are still going up. You know, retail stores are still going up. They, you know, they're still there. Yeah. But when they're you figuring hurt. out a way to get by to yeah. be able to build them. The market rules. The market well, tells you what you want and what you don't. With the oil boom when North Dakota, they had restaurants that were built ready to open. Freezers are stocked. They couldn't get any help. They had to get rid of the food because it was going to rot before they could get any help. It's just, and that, you know, the oil boom was a different story because everybody was chasing the oil boom stuff. Mm -hmm. And so people that you'd normally had have in there, they're going to go get a job, meaningless job in the oil fields that are going to pay them twice what they'd be working at the restaurant, but they don't realize when that's capped, it's done. There ain't going to be any more. You know, they built, they built houses and all this stuff, all this infrastructure. Guess what? They're sitting empty or sitting no, was, because they moved on. They got to the point where they needed to be or couldn't go any further, and they moved on. Was there a goal to buy more property? Or I, I didn't see that in any of this We're, stuff. We had discussion of buying some behind Mid, uh, Mid Elko. When was that? That was like a, a while ago. ago. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. there's no plans in. Okay. No. So no, I just really... I just was voicing my okay. opinion on that because I just don't I just don't feel we need to be in the business to be competition to the developers. I say yeah, let the market rule. At the end of the day, I mean, there's enough development here. A lot of people are not wanting we so sat, much. We sat on how many lots over in the industrial park for how many years? We sat on them and sat on them and sat on them, where that money could have been used elsewhere for better things. That's just how I feel. I just don't feel we need to be in competition with the developers. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't think we need to be buying any more property. I think the only lots that we have right now that are city-owned are the ones by where Midco is going, right, I think? I mean, that's, that's it. And one next door to the liquor store. Oh, yeah, yeah right. Yep. Yeah. But that was a package deal. Yeah, right. That was, it was inevitable that we'd have to do that. Yeah, I forgot about that. 
No, I didn't forget about it. I was just thinking about it. But, but yeah, yeah I, I don't I, have any interest in buying more. No, I, mean, I don't either. Yeah. None. I do agree with Councilman Calls, and I think that if, if there's a way that we can entice retail businesses, our better bet. You know, um, unfortunately, and I think you even mentioned it on there, Luke, with about the Dairy Queen coming in. We don't have any. Cho we can't tell a business he mm -hmm. can't come here right. if they're meeting all our variances and, and billing codes and everything else. You can't tell a business can't come here. I, you know, that was like when Riverside, when Colburn's opened up and how he was just gosh dang. Every time I walked in there, he was bending my ear, yelling at me and complaining to me. Dude, I don't have any. We didn't approach Colburn's. They came to the city and wanted. And if you wanted to make a change, you had a year's time to make those changes in your business. Mm -hmm. And I said, people in Iceni are very loyal to their businesses they do have. Make those changes before they open and you won't lose business. Boy, he took everything he had and moved it down to Minneapolis. That was his choice to make. You know, and then on the, on, the, on the flip side of that, we got yelled at for another gas station going down there. He sold his grocery store to Click Trip. Yep. You know, the same thing they complained about. You can't say, no, you can't sell your land to Quick Trip. You can't. You know, I mean, the same thing with Caribou. Well, we already have a Caribou across the street. I asked that guy, how was that going to work? You're you're the franchise, and you sold franchise the rights to whoever's at over there. He said, it's not going to be a problem. And I don't think it's hurt either one of them. You got traffic going this way, you got traffic going that way. Yeah. You sure ain't going to make a loop to go that way when you can turn, when you're going right by it on this side. So... You know, I mean, Cambridge is getting into their coffee shop. It's the old uh, Valder's Motors. Oh. That's Snookers or whatever. They just yeah. built one down in 65. 65. That's where Cooper's Corner was yeah. replaced by a coffee shop. Yeah. yeah. Or not Cooper's Corner, uh, Red Ox. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, so did Cambridge need their coffee shop? They got Starbucks, they got Caribou, and then they got a couple other ones in there. It's like, do you need it? Not necessarily, but you can't tell these businesses they got to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's not doing yourself or anybody any justice. Business is a big part of the city, and it do, businesses do, does help the taxpayer. I don't care how you look at it; it, it does help immensely. But but that being said, if if there was a way that we could use EDA funds to help with some other land that we can help them entice them to be here, I'm all for that. I, what we can do legally, I don't know, and I'd be lying to you if I said I did not. Well, it, yeah, for that property that's <clears throat> north of Minoko, I mean, it's a, it's still pretty high. Oh, so, yeah. Um, th I think that'll be there for a while, unless It also takes infrastructure, in which is Yeah, that was, expensive and that's the worst part. Yeah. If it had the infrastructure, it would probably be worse, maybe, what they're asking, but without that infrastructure, it's not. You know, no sooty sewer and water, and that's, you know, Jason can tell you that's a lot of money it would take to fill that thing up, you know, for that infrastructure. So it, I just, I just don't, I just really don't want to see us invest money into that. That's what I got to say on it. And I think the majority of us up here are going to be in compliance with that. So just maybe further down the road revisit it. That's all. Yeah, say. I'm not saying we throw it out the door, but I just at this time I don't feel that we're necessary looking into it. There's still some lots that are privately owned, like where Dairy Queen went. And, um, there's still lots around there that are available if someone's serious about coming in. They can also still, even though it's private owned lot, they can still approach the city for programs or any <coughs> help they might need. A friend of mine owns that lot right across from Wintergreens. And he's trying to sell that between Wintergreens and those apartments. You'd like to get out from underneath that. And that's the thing that you do when you start buying city-owned properties is let's say you don't pick that guy's spot and then you do all this stuff to incentivize somebody to come over here while you're competing with that yep. poor guy that didn't get lucky enough to have the city buy his property. So. And that's why I said if there's a way that we can get the EDA to help entice people to buy those properties, we're helping those people out more so than by just bringing the business in. So we're, we're talking about the developments or by Dairy Queen stuff. I had something that was... It's been kind of a concern for me for like a year. Um, so between, uh, what is that, Richard and, you know, the Chinese restaurant, 
between the Chinese restaurant and the end of Hurricane, there's no sidewalk section connecting there. So almost every day in the summer, I see nurses and people walking on the street there. I've even walked on the street there, like walked a quick trip. So I would like to see if we can assess those property owners there to build that sidewalk to finish that connection before someone gets hit. So I did get the answer to that, Councilman O'Meara. We cannot assess for it for our policy um, because it was not petitioned to come into the city. The, the city would have to put it in install and pay to put the sidewalk there. Why, why is that? We do have an assessment policy, and if it hasn't been requested or petitioned by the, the homeowner to put that in there and whatever the petition requirements are, and perhaps Jason Cook could speak on that, um, we can't just assess to put a sidewalk there. If we want the sidewalk there, the city pays to put a sidewalk there. Okay, so I know on my street, Broadway Street, probably 15 years ago, um, the city made us pay an assessment on sidewalks, even though nobody on our street wanted it. Is that but so? It that wasn't was not a vacant lot, right? J Jason, I mean, it's still owned by someone, so it's not vacant technically, is it? I mean, I don't well, know. It's not how built. That it, built on. Okay. Once someone builds something, buys a lot, builds something there, they're going to have to put a sidewalk there. Right. Right, but do and we pay for it themselves? Okay. Yep. Um, the stretch that they own. Okay. I that, just that's you when you bring that up. Even the worst one is Whiskey Road, North Five. Because then I think Councilman Gordon knows there's people that walk down Whiskey Road, and that is one of the worst cut. I've been fighting for Miss Wood knows as long as she's been here, Dan as long as he's been on council. I've been fighting to get that okay. section in. And there's two people on that property on that stretch that are fighting it. Well, actually, Daniel. one. But the other one. But goes the other one will goes with the other guy. He he says I'll take it or leave it. Doesn't bother me. But if he doesn't want it, then I don't want it. So it's been a nightmare fight. And I even reached out to the county through Mike Waring because the telephone poles are in the right way, right away of the road. So is there a way that we can do it in that right away so it doesn't affect him? Five is a dangerous road. Mm -hmm. Our whiskey road is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Both of them are. And there is sidewalk on the west side, but that sidewalk comes down on the east side, stops so at that. Martin's Landing. Yeah, by Martin's Landing. And then it goes, what, five yeah. blocks? Then you got to crisscross mm -hmm. and get on. Yep. And then you're crisscrossing. And every, so let's just put crosswalks in there. Crosswalks, that isn't the answer. That's just another way a person can get hit. Well, there's some there. There is, but it's just the kids walk down Whiskey Road, and if it's dark out, you don't see them. I mean, that's why when we did Railroad Avenue, that was a big push because I used to go shut the car wash down at night, and I'd drive on that street, and that's the way I would go, and I'd see people. I didn't see them until I almost hit them because they were walking down there with on the sidewalk, so that's why they got the sidewalk and the lights in there because it, there is a ton of people that walk there. So is that, is that a state law then, or what, is that a city? It's a city code. Okay. It's a city policy. Okay, I mean. I mean, there are, there are state statute requirements on assessing that we have to abide by, but. Correct, so, so the, the city assessment policy says that a new sidewalk that doesn't exist isn't accessible unless the residents or the businesses petitioned for it. Um, and so for this segment that you're talking about, um, you know, assuming those vacant lots weren't petitioning for it and the city wanted to proceed, well, as long as we're putting in the right of way, we can, but the city would have to pay for it. Um, I don't know, I believe like 10 ish years ago, uh, the assessment policy got a little tweaked. Okay. So when you say 15 years ago, I'm not Yeah, exactly it was 2004. Sure. I'm not sure what it was before, but if, if it was re replacing existing. No, it was building it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, we could look into that. Okay. Now the policy has this specifically worded: the new sidewalk isn't assessed. Okay, I mean Re public reconstruction is. Sure, I, public safety is important. I just don't know if there's like a way around that because you know they have these lots that they're going to sell for a lot of money, and you know is a little sidewalk project going to really kill these you know the people that own the lots? I, I don't know. There's I feel like there's got to be a way. And same with the whiskey project. I mean, what's it going to take someone to get hit by a car before we try and do something with it? I mean, I know you've we tried. Have. It's, but there has it's been to be on a my way. goal setting, I think, probably a handful of times in the last 10 sure. years. Yeah. I have seen the, some in there. Within the last couple of years, Jeff, I think, went to the houses there. He yep. did. And one house minute house. he was for it, the next minute he dropped, he got mad. And, and then another one said, well, if you extend yeah. my 
fence. Yep. And then we we'll said we it. put a fence in. Well, who's going to cut the grass on the other side of the fence? And I mean, it, it just, it, it, every time you come up with something for them, it was something else and it was something else. The other one that, that's really harmful for sidewalk is coming up Railroad Avenue from the VFW all the way up to Main Street. Yep. There is yep, a, just a painted line. It's just a painted line. Yep. Well, that, that, that curb will help curb a car a little bit, but no, just a, that line ain't gonna do us any good. Yep. And when we've had street dances, I think it's like a flipping uh, freeway. It is, it is, yep. And, but I, we looked into that. I remember uh, George was against that. It was gonna be- The road, the road wasn't wide enough. Yeah, there's, we've looked into it. Yeah. It's actually on the capital improvement plan that when we go to <clears throat> rehabilitate that segment of railroad, that we would move that curb in um, and then have it grade separated basically. Sidewalk would be up off down to the back of curb instead yep. of just that straight. Um, so at that time, that is in the budgeted capital improvement plan for when we do that segment of railroad. Um, at the time, it was just a concept of what would it cost to do it as a standalone, not touching the street, patch it in. And because the storm sewer into the catch basins are all st extended to where the current curb is, the cost was significant to try and just move the curb over to put a sidewalk in there. And so, um, so it was kind of determined at that time to do it as part of when the maintenance program says the road's ready to get done. And so I don't know off the top of my head how far out it is, but it's, it is in right. the program. I missed where you guys were talking about there. What, what, what sidewalk were you talking about with the painted lines? Railroad by the Railroad VFW. Railroad Avenue going from Main East Street side. down to the VFW. Okay. Going south. East side. There's East a side. white line painted like you, you look, know, there's a white line painted on the curb. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's walk for pedestrian walk. Yeah, that, there's a lot of people that walk that. I, I, it there is. There's a ton of people. So is, is there any, is there any uh, state funding or anything for sidewalks? that we've ever looked at, or is that even an option? I mean, we, they have state funding for roads, so what's the, I mean. So if it's a state aid road funded, then the sidewalk gets. Can it be connected to a state aid road, like Main Street? Or not, just not with state funding. Okay. I believe. Has to be directly right. on the road? It has to be the road that you're building with state aid funding, and it has to have a sidewalk at that point. So right. sidewalks aren't a requirement. So on state aid routes, we don't have to add sidewalk, oh, but, don't. but we can, and we can use state aid funds for that. Okay. We can also use state aid funds along county roads. So we would be able to use state aid money towards the whiskey infill piece. If they would let us. If, yeah, that one, the issue is right away. Yeah. The two lots have their land jog out where it just blocks any space to get through. I just, I'd sure like to see if we can't pursue that with the county, but you know, you've been dealing with the county on the lights at Quick Trip, and that, that snail pace is ready to get anything done there. I mean, Mike's even said that it's, that we had those lights ready to go this year. Miss Wood I was I do have an there. update on that that I'll provide in a little bit. And, it, and then all of a sudden they had to use all this money for some other funding and that got pushed to the back burner. It's, it's unfortunate that's, bureaucracy at its best. Yeah, I would like to look into something like that if we can. Some sort of funding to at least get one of the sections. I mean, if, if the biggest problem with those couple of homeowner, homeowners was cost of it, I mean, if we could get funding from the state or... Well, we have to buy easements from them. We have to buy part of their property. Their property jumps out. Okay. And we did have that. Actually, the council had put aside some money for land acquisition costs to try to buy that part, put the fence up, as the council member Lindeen said, and it still it wasn't enough to okay. get them to I know. want to put it in. Do you always have to buy the easements or whatever? Because on my street, we, we didn't get paid for that, and the, the sidewalk was just put in. I don't depends well, on how wide the street is. Road. No, it depends on where the right-of-way is and how far it goes from the center line in. What is it, 33 so, feet, Jason? Yeah, our, the typical is 33 feet uh, either so from side. From the, the center of the road, not yeah. from the is end. That, okay, the so on a wider road, road, the city's kind of shafted, in a sense, on... Sure, I guess it just depends on, yeah, from the back of curb to where the property line is, can we squeeze the walk in there? And in this case, we can't. And so we'd have to buy sidewalk easement onto their property just for these two parcels because their land just jogs over the way they were platted back, you know, originally. There is a way around it, but I, I don't want to be that guy. I right. mean, you can yeah. claim in and domain, it. but yeah. I don't want to yeah. be that guy. Yeah. I and that's, that and I definitely don't, it, it's not, to me, it's not a feasible option. 
but he said, my attorney said, I don't have to do anything. So what do you, so do we spend money for an attorney and deal with this? It, I think, you know, I think we look at other options and hopefully maybe he sells and somebody else comes in and is all for it. Mm -hmm. I, I, oh, if, the, if he had kids that had to walk to school, he'd be all for it, mm -hmm. but he don't well, have kids. I know the guy I work with him and that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> If we, if, if council members, if we do want to add that to the list of goals for staff to spend time on, we can add it. We'll keep going through our items here. Mm -hmm. uh, the next item is D4, uh, which has a summary of all of our 2023, 24, 25 capital improvements. These are items that are about $5,000 or more. So the littler items you don't see here, those are in your capital improvement plan, which was provided by Mike during our budget discussions. I put this in here for context because sometimes things that are in the capital improvement plan need to be discussed. We do have something being discussed later this evening, which is our splash pad. And this is where we start saving those, that fund 920 where we have items being saved for. So we're not bonding to stick with our finance plan. Um, that's why I bring this for context. So if you have any questions on that specifically on what they are, you can let me know. Uh, I did have a bunch of questions on this one. I emailed them to you, Josie. Um, I'd just like to discuss them a little bit, um, if that's okay. So we had, um, there was a fairly large expense for desk chairs, and I know obviously they're important, but I didn't know if there was a way to, I mean, you're buying so many, if there's a way to get a discount, or I think you'd said they're like between three and 400 bucks each is what are kind of budgeted for. I think that's about what we end up spending on them. Um, we do go through state bid uh, and work with um, vendors that have state bids, so they do have reduced pricing in there. So when you're buying 20 some chairs, it, it does add mm -hmm, up and we right. haven't replaced our chairs sporadically. We've done all of them and they're good for at least 10 years. And then the chairs that are in our conference room um, at the end of their life, I think they were 15 years old. We moved them to our exterior conference table. So we're not buying new chairs for that um, and rotate those over as well as PD has had theirs rotated through of used chairs. Um, but we do competitive Pricing. I did that, that one specifically, so mm -hmm. I know that I got, I get three vendors, and one of them, at least one of them is through state bid, um, and try to get the best, best bang for your buck, and I can tell you there's some cheap side chairs oh, yeah. in there that are good for the pocketbook, not great for sitting. Sure. So you do get what you pay for when it comes to office equipment. I but get, yeah, I buy Menard chairs. And I don't sit them, sit in it all day long. No. So these yeah. are sat in all day, yeah, I mean all day long, and so we do expect bucks. them to last ten years. So we're looking for chairs that have the warranty, the ergonomic features that we have to keep our liabilities mm -hmm. of workman's comp down. A lot of things go into it, but we do price price it out. Okay. And then there was a couple of items in there for the streets. I know I talked to Matt about some of this. There's you know a couple of trailers and stuff gets pushed out. I'm just curious, how does that? Uh, maybe that's a question for Mike, but what does that? do for the like the budget so you have i mean there was you know a couple trailers that were on there um the tractor the 545d uh there was a couple other things on there that aren't getting replaced next year so the things that don't get replaced when we, we have a useful life and we plug it in that year mm -hmm. when we get to that year if we don't need it to be replaced or it's cost effective to repair whatever item is we just keep pushing it back year 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 one year at a time keep pushing it back um, it doesn't really change Fund 920 a whole lot because that is a continuous um, ebb and flow of um, things that are being funded. It really doesn't affect anything unless you completely, completely remove the item. So if we said that, that one of the trailers or something that you're talking about or the tractor, we don't ever need to replace that. When it, if it gets removed from Fund 920, um, then that starts impacting where now you have money to spend to somewhere else or move out of there, but if you're just pushing it back a year, you have to go past out inflection point, and Mike will tell you it's about 20 years. Okay. I've never understood the logic on that, and I still don't yeah. know that it's quite accurate, because it, 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 any, anywhere in government speak, I understand that's how it works, but anytime in your real life, if you can get another year out of something, you're, you're thankful that you got more time out of it, right? So yeah, we can push it back, and we still eventually will need the money. We still have to spend it at some point, but if we bought time, I mean, time is worth something, so. Well, I think, think that's why we don't replace it if right. it doesn't need it. Right. We're not yeah. replacing it when it just comes but up. But it's right. still, I mean, I get the it's argument still that, yeah, it on eventually the radar. it will need to be, it needs to know. be on the radar, I get that, yeah. right, but. I mean, I just, I guess I just worry if it's, if we just keep pushing stuff back, are we, 
you know, are we levying for these dollars, planning for these items, and then we get them, and then, like, what do we do with that money? That was kind of my question. Like, are we going to keep taking money from taxes, and then if we keep pushing it out, like, I, it just... Well, every year, as he goes through what has been moved around, like, I can tell you in 2025 and 2027, we have a negative balance. So we need to fill up those buckets with something. So he's got the numbers. I mean, he doesn't have every year accounted for. So sometimes it is levy dollars that we're maximizing. We did some of that this year. Um, but we do still have money that we have to quote unquote find to make sure that all those things are funded. So as they get pushed out past certain inflection points of like one past 2025, um, that bucket would have been not in the red anymore, so to say. Sure. When you say inflection point, like what is that, you know? Minimum? Those are the points where we don't have everything in the positive. Okay, okay. So like um, Matt figures out, you know, Trailer A and trailer B were plugged in six years ago for replacement this year. That's if he thinks he they can make another year, maybe two, with a couple minor repairs. He's saving the city money. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, back. absolutely. That a couple meetings ago, you're looking for things for the department to touch. Mm -hmm. That's what he did. Right. Yep. We can get by with what we got. Mm -hmm. We don't need to purchase it this year. Oh, yeah, I understand that. Uh, I love that. Yeah, 100%. So in the capital improvement, um, I believe he sent that out to everybody with part of the budget meetings. If you scroll to the bottom of Fund 920, he's got numbers going across all the different years. I think that you don't see all the years because it only so much fits on that sheet, whatever that you view. But you will see that there's a lot of black, and then there's a few years that there's red. That's That money will get infilled by things not getting done as we're trying to pay cash basically for everything in that bond. I, I have to do CIP every year in my department. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things get shuffled around, some things get pushed up. Yep. Sometimes we got slide forward. Slide We've forward. done that, forward. it happens too. Yep. This piece of equipment is okay, there's two, the motor just went out, but it, it's not scheduled for two more years. Mm -hmm. uh, we had that so we shift things yeah. around. Here. It's yeah. malleable, yep. So that generator, we had to replace it. It wasn't scheduled to be done, but it went out. What are you going to do? You know, lift pumps. Matt knows as well as I do. Those lift pumps, they have a 20-year life expectancy, but something wrong gets pushed down the sewer, which, you know, how many residents do we have and how many kids and something gets down there and it goes into that thing, and all of a sudden now it burned the motor out. It's a new pump. It's not, you, you just don't replace the motor because now the impeller shaft is worn and bushings are gone, bearings are shot. By the time you go piecemeal it, it was cheaper to replace the whole damn thing. Well, all that stuff is highly corrosive too. Yep, so. yep, and sewer, sewer gas and sewer sewage is very, very, very hard on, on equipment. And just like the water treatment plant, the chemicals, chlorine eats everything. And I don't care what you do, it, it's, a, it's going to fail. And yep. it's not a matter of it failing, when it's gonna fail is the problem. And sometimes it's not at the most opportune time. I, I do agree if, if you know, just, can, just I'm just gonna grab something here, uh, like these uh, trailers that he's got sitting here, uh, the felling trailers. If they're functional, by all means, let's keep using them. How often, do, you know, how much, it's not like they get 10,000 miles a, a month on them, you know? We can get by with it. Let's just, I agree. Let's, you know, I'd like them to all have nice, nice, shiny new toys. Is we've had in fire district meetings the same thing. Al, you got too many shiny new things. You got to kind of curb that back. I don't a think bit. any of our public works would say that we have too many ever. <laughs> no, no, but you, but you, you know what I'm saying is, <laughs> no, is, know. is, they do, they do pretty well with what they have. Mm -hmm. But we sit up here and, and we, whatever decisions we all make as a team up here reflects not just to our workers, but it reflects to our tax payers. And I'm all for it. I'm not, I'm the worst guy in the world to talk about this. I don't throw nothing away. I save shit. I save it and then five years from now, I'm like, why did I save? I'll throw it away. And I guarantee you a week after I threw it away and it's gone, oh, now I need it. I wish you had it. You know, so it's all these things will, or snowball effect. You know, uh, handy door, handicap door activators, 
when COVID came, it was a big thing to get all touch-free faucets, touch-free doors, all these things. We got actually funding though. Uh huh. We got funding. You, we, there were some that covered a lot of that, and there's some places didn't get any funding for it. So unfortunately, these are all things that sometimes we just have to suck up and move forward with. It, don't get me wrong. I'm all for trying to cut things that we don't necessarily need that we can get by with. I'm 100% on board for that. But there's certain things we just can't cut because it's not going to do us any of us any better. So, so uh, I have another thing on here. The There's a GPS unit for 8,000. I know, Josie, you'd said that was uh, because we've been borrowing Bolton and Manx. Can you give maybe an explanation on that to council and how that's going to be used and how it'll help us or what that provides us? Sure. So Public Works does a lot of GPS pointing, so everything from our signs, our catch basins, our manholes, our gate valves, our curb stops, all that stuff is GPS, and we put it into a software um, so we can Public Works can do their job as efficiently as they can, and it helps us for our replacement. We put in there the year it was installed, any kind of repairs that have been done to it, so we can track everything. Um, we don't have an in-house GPS unit. We are graciously provided one by Bolton and Mink for a number of years. And uh, Jason steals it from his guys and brings it to us to use. And we keep a list going of what we have to GPS. Then Matt will go out and say, hey, we got the unit. Go, here's the list. Um, I, we are to the size I believe we should be to have our own GPS unit. I, this has been something in the works for about four years. And we'll get it, we put it in the list in five so we can have it at a fiscally responsible time. But having something that we can make updates to, not having to write it out by hand and put it right into the unit that updates our shape files right automatically, goes right to our maps, I think is very beneficial for city operations. Sure. Uh, a good example where they come in handy is catch basin this time of year. Don't yeah, you gotta, you, you, gotta, you, you gotta warm it, you gotta heat it to yeah. dig to it. Yep. You can't find it. Yep, I've had that well, problem. Here, here. If they need to go out and it's, we got a mm -hmm. fast thaw and they need to go out and clear them catch basin out so the water will run. Mm -hmm. Off the creek would do them. Yeah, yep. GPS will take them right to it. Yep. That way they're not digging, you know, 30 Pick feet of curb yep. looking for it. I was just curious. And stuff. And the other so thing too is there's a lot of benefits. Mm -hmm. Those unfunded oh, yeah. mandates of having to um, keep track of all of our MS4 requirements. If we have any kind of spill or we find something that someone dumped 20 gallons of paint down the driveway or something like that. It's very easy and slick, not that we have to do things by being slick, but very convenient for us to GPS where that was because we have to report that. We have to show pictures and we can upload everything all together um, by having a GPS unit on hand. If we don't have it on hand, we're handwriting all that down, taking pictures, we go back to the office, we upload it. It's more of a process. Mm -hmm. So as we're trying to not have too many bodies to get the job done, that technology does help. Big thing too is curb stops, when grass, Say a house has been there for five years. If that curb stop wasn't ra raised up enough to start with, I guarantee you there's six inches of dirt on it. And Matt's got to send out one of his guys. They could spend an hour and a half looking for one curb stop. It's not an easy task. Or years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I mean, so we've had some tricky ones the out whole there. Front yard. It's here somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and wait. You know the guy who knew where that was? He doesn't work asphalt. here anymore. But it's, 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 I think, I think that's like one of these necessary evils. Yeah. I yep. think it's, it, in the long run, it'll, that 9,000 would probably pay for itself in the first couple of years. Yep. I'm not against it. I just thought it was interesting that that's something that we should know that we'll have our own, hopefully. So, and then I had another question. Um, this has been a fairly common question, especially last fall with all the leaves and stuff falling. Um, so I know that we have the compost site open, obviously. So um, I'm going to interrupt you. This is actually coming up later is it? Okay. as one of our discussion items. Okay. So. And then I have another one here. So there is a lot of stuff in there for, I know the county's doing stuff with it for the police radios and kind of technology stuff. I don't know if Travis could kind of give us a, like a rundown on what we have and what's maybe bad as far as the radios and what's, what's going to be coming up. The long story, there, there's a, I don't have the terminology, there's different encryption that's required by the FBI that's coming at some point. Um, we don't have a definite date, figuring three to seven years, which is kind of weird. Now, luckily, we purchased this portable radio, was I want to say two years ago, before we even knew there was a mandate, and I called our radio vendor and said, hey, by the way, did these have it? So our portable radios is are good for their life cycle. Um, some of our squad radios are, but I'm not... So as far as that, 
I don't think we're gonna, we'll make it work because we're as we swap out vehicles, we'll be getting new vehicle radios. So I'm not, I don't wanna say I'm not concerned, but I don't, since we don't have a definite date, I don't think that I wanna plan because those things are four or $5,000 mm -hmm. for a squad radio. Mm -hmm. Worst case, our main patrol vehicles that we use for the patrol vehicles for our, our cars for service, will have the updated ones by the time they get cycled out in the capital plan. So worst case, some of the, like our SRO vehicles or the, or the CSO, we might have to operate on a portable radio inside their patrol vehicle. So that's as far as that mandate. I think we're, we're okay. Versus like the county, I know, put a huge investment into it because all of their radios were obsolete. And this is an interesting thing. Like when we purchased these radios two years ago, we did not know that there was gonna be a mandate coming down now that's gonna require this encryption. So there could have been a chance if we didn't, we just got lucky that we got radios that are gonna be in compliance. We could have been sitting here and say, you know those 80 some thousand dollars we spent two years ago, <laughs> they're not gonna be worth it, you know? So we got lucky. So we're, I think we're sitting good with that. Okay. All right, that AES encryption. And I can speak too on, we've purchased a couple radios for public works and we're like, oh, this will be great. Let's get these great radios. So then if we have emergencies, I think this was maybe around the time of that blackout of the city or something. And so they can communicate with PD or vice versa didn't take very long and they just, they're obsolete. They, police couldn't use those. It's just technology and you have zero control over it. Okay. And like at the same time when I asked, I was asking, what is Motorola's life expectancy for technology wear and tear and they gave us eight years. You know, and I think we were planning on 10, but who knows, like I said, we didn't know what happened in the last two, three years with this mandate. So we're hoping you know, that what we have is gonna work within our capital plan. And I, I'm pretty confident what we have will work so we won't have that influx that you saw the county had to put out a lot mm -hmm. of money. Mm -hmm. and that was a big dollar amount to get in compliance with that. Yep. Okay, that's just what I'm trying to avoid. Basically. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Yep. And then the, I know Josie had asked you this, the, uh, the car bodybuilding camera server, um, is that, do you have any more information on that yet? So that was $48,000 for uh, basically a city s a server for all the body cam footage and everything. Yeah, so I got the information from Travis that I provided to you. Okay. So that is the technology yeah. of. And so it's the technology again. Like, yeah. even, so we got on 2003, when was it? When was it 2019, 19. I think when we purchased it. It was great technology. We're still working with it. Um, and at that time, and I, is, uh, you had two options. You run your own server like that. Or at that time, you buy um, a different brand. Vendors have their own deal. And they run a cloud server, but you're paying, at that time it was $80 per body camera per month and 110 per, whatever it was, so the legacy cost of that after 2.9 or three years, now that was break even from what okay. we paid. And then as every year, you're still paying that legacy cost. Where ours, the other good thing is, this system we have might not be valid. We might not upgrade to the same thing and when that time comes, but, all that data is sitting in a local storage. So the other problem, if you went with a cloud storage through, and I don't want to use name brands because I don't want to mm -hmm. Google some of them, but what happens when you go to, go to a different vendor? Now you still pay them for storage fees because we can't get rid of that video. Some of the video has to be indefinite, just like our evidence, right? So now you started with them, you're still going to be paying storage for them even though you'll never use their video ever again. So we'll reevaluate it once we get there. We just used the numbers we used last time and we'll look at what technology is available because you know they're talking about going with a new records management system, which is obsolete. That is something that's going to be coming up in the next three, two, three to seven years, which is a, a shared system between the county that we pay for, and we'll have some pay in that. And the one of the ones they're looking at is integrated with a body camera software piece of the puzzle. So I can't really tell you if we're going to use that server thing or we're going to go something different because technology is going to be different. If that yeah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. I do think it's important to also. Um, just let everyone aware if they are not, is when we have these costs in here, we still abide by staff, by we abide by the purchasing policy. So we always get two to three quotes, depending on how much the cost of it is, that determines that threshold of how many quotes we're getting and, and securing. So we price these out. We don't just purchase something because we have the money in there. We still have to cost it out. Now, at this day and age, in the last year or two, we've seen that our numbers are not enough but that hadn't always been the case. So we do try to find the best deal for the city and not just go because there's money available and do try to come under that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I have a question about uh, the old VFW park as well. I know, what was that, about last year, I think it was, that we'd given it back to the VFW. And I, 
So at the time, I was a little bit, I wasn't totally happy with that because I think that neighborhood over there is a little bit less well off than some of the other neighborhoods that have pl five parks within, you know, within their uh, reachable distance. So I know we, we did give that to the VFW, but I didn't know if there was any way we could maybe try and get like a basic swing set or just like something out there. Just That was part of the reasons we got rid of it because we had had to upgrade all the equipment. Right, and it was I understand. cost us a lot more money than that park was being used. That park was like minimal use, very minimal. Mm -hmm. And I know people that live where they said I, they would never go in there. Okay. So then that was, we offered, didn't we offer the VFW the park equipment and they said no, take it out? Yeah, so they, they actually own the land. We leased it from them from like the dollar or whatever in that 1980s agreement. I'd have to look it up to know the exact dates. Um, and we did, actually, I think it was Matt Sylvester who did talk to them and offered it to them and what, what they wanted to keep in there. So if they did want to keep it for their patrons, potentially people in the area, and they did not want it. So we ended up taking it out, utilizing some of the dog park mm -hmm. um, and some things needed to be thrown away. It wasn't actually good enough to be auctioned off um, because of the, the age of it and the safety. Okay, I, I don't know, I just would. I, it might not be what you want, Steve, but I think it'd be nice to see like a swing set or something low cost over there. As soon as we put That's something in there, now that goes back on our tax rolls, and then we got to maintain it. It's BFW's property, though. It's not our property. We don't own that property. Then we yeah, have to right. lease it from them but it'd again. Be this, it'd be this, I, I don't know. For them, they probably don't want nothing in there for their own insurance reasons. Fair. Someone gets hurt. They was it was it them that asked to get rid of the stuff? Or no, was it needed to be replaced, so then we revisited the agreement with the BFW. It was going to be... Hundreds of thousands, of, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, if you, to if you go it. if you go full out, I mean, a swing set's not that expensive. But I, I mean, I get it. I just thought it'd be interesting because you know you put we're putting in, I don't know, I don't even remember how much is it is a year, but hundreds of thousands of dollars into parks, and then that area over there has nothing, zip. So I I, have, I I don't know where all the parks are in this town. I really couldn't even name the half of the parks. But I look at what I've driven so around the parks that I've seen. I've looked at them. Gone there different times of days. Never seen people in some of them. The one over across from my place, that thing is full from sun up to sundown. That park, it, 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 unbelievable how much that thing, I can't believe it gets used as much as it does. I think over by yours is another one that's kind of hit and miss, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it's, um, that's the one that, uh, when we, we turned it into that, green space or something. We talked about taking stuff out there space but whisper ridge park yeah but yeah. there's a lot of kids you know go there and use it so i don't think i mean i don't think there's a single park on the on the east side of main street is there not that I, no nope i mean that's just that's just how i see it until you get across the highway and then academy park yeah so i just wanted to bring that up i think that'd be nice if we somehow could do something basic, but if council's not on board with that ever. Um, problem is with there isn't really any city owned land. Oh, right. It, it would have to be a lease again. But when that, that area was built, the park, the park system that we do, well, that we do now when a development comes in, they have to set aside park dedicated land to put in a park. When that was developed, that was never a question. Mm -hmm. You gotta realize that's old. Oh, I know old, it's old. old I live old. over there. I know you, it's old. You you weren't even born when that was started. I trust know. me. I know. So there was a lot of things that were done years and years and years ago that we couldn't even get by doing anymore. That was done in this town. So I understand where you're coming from, but at what cost do you want to do it? Right. As soon as we buy that swing, that swing's got to be updated. We got to carry insurance on it because if a kid gets hurt on it, now we're carrying the insurance on it. Now it's another added cost, another added cost, another added cost for something that wasn't being used. So for for the park insurance, is that that's got to be an umbrella policy on all the parks? I would assume it's not a each individual. Uh, we do list them out individually okay. uh, and what the amenities that they have. If it's playground equipment, if it's passive equipment, uh, if there's a shelter there, we do go. Line, uh, line them out now if there's um, we do pay based upon how many parks we have and things like that but we do list it out with our insurance provider okay. and the park and rec did go through a lot of these parks with recommendations because that was one of the things I wanted to do 
I'd rather make Bluebird Park our, our, our park shining crown. I, I do think that that is when things started changing. When, when the action came about for VFW Park, it was because council at that time, the desire was to put more resources and funding into making Bluebird Park more of a Mecca park than having as many neighborhood hills. And I think the VFW Park, I don't, not, I don't think it was geographic on why it was chosen. It's just because everything there was decrepit mm -hmm. and a safety hazard. Right. I think that neighborhood, the, you know, the people that live there have gotten older, too, and it, it wa really wasn't being used very much. And at, at the time, it was just not worth the, the cost to, to make the improvements that had to be made. But yeah, I remember I heard the cost, and I, for some reason, I wanted to say Jeff said it was like $1.2 million or something. And I, that just no. I don't know about that. I don't know about yeah. that, couple hundred thousand dollars, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Okay. For sure, a couple hundred thousand. Okay. But it's, it, you know, you don't really realize some of those houses started back there in the 1970s. Oh, yeah. And there are some of them that are on the other side of the road were built long, long before that. So, I mean, that's one of the older part of towns. Mm -hmm. I know. And it, unfortunately, back then, a lot of things didn't have to be done the way they are today. Now, I don't agree with, with us forcing a development to build a park system and then we go in and take it over from them, as somebody, I think Ms. Wood knows who I'm referring to. Uh, <clears throat> I don't necessarily agree with that. I'd rather let them maintain it, that development area, rather than us carry that burden of cost. Do I think it's necessary to have parks in these newer developments? Absolutely. Parks, believe it or not, and I've heard this more so than you'll ever hear from, people that live in Cambridge, have businesses in Cambridge, have said, you guys in Iceani have it got it going on. And I said, what do you mean? Your parks are way better than everything in Cambridge. And that's what, uh, why they like the area is the park system. You know, I think there's a park way back off of the east side of Whiskey Road, way back in there. Somebody asked me about this park. I didn't even know where it was. South, South Whiskey. Was it tennis courts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't even know it existed. Yeah. They said they didn't even know it. They stumbled across it by walking through there. It's kind of tucked There's in there by the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's how they stumbled across it. I think it's basketball court or something, isn't it, that's all it's there? It's <clears throat> I think it's a tennis court. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to, it's like, it's not far from Birch. And yeah. a, lot of, a lot of kids cut across the railroad tracks there, right behind that park. Yeah. I remember doing that when I was little. But I mean, it's like, is it being used? Is it worth putting money into? I don't, I can't, I honestly can't give you the answer. That's on the, that's on the capital improvement plan too. I think that was a couple years out for the tennis court resurfacing. I think the one off of, one off of five was sooner. I don't, I don't know. But I mean, it's just, it, it, do I want to see us cut things in parks? No, I don't, but I, do, I don't want to see us put money into parks that aren't being utilized. And I think that that's why the, the VFW park was the one that was gonna cost us a lot of money to do, and I'd rather see that get funneled into something else. Because, uh, what was it, Miss Wood, you can get, you, there's park dedicated fund money, we had a big fund, but we couldn't use it to we had to use it to replace or purchase new equipment. We couldn't use it to maintain or, I, yeah, so. So there's there's loop there's mm -hmm. stipulations on how you can use that money and I it just you know it's it sucks. All right. You know. So I mean technically you could take some of that money and if you really wanted to I mean it's technically not a park already so couldn't you take some of that that you can only put towards new parks and buy a swing set for a couple thousand dollars take it off the I mean take it off of the splash pad. I get I get you, where you're you know getting I mean? at but yeah. who's, if we buy that swing set who's going to maintain it? Every year that thing's got to be maintained. And every so often you've got to replace the stuff. And I think there's people with 
the younger people that are moving over there, they're putting swing sets up in their backyard. I just, I, I understand what yeah. you're saying, but you want to cut things, that's, I, a cut, it, it's minimal amount, but it's a minimal amount of investment up front, but it's the longevity that's going to carry and, carry and carry and carry and carry and carry on for something that you may not, you may think it's not being used. You may, you, you may think it's getting used, and it's not, and we still got to maintain it. I personally could care less if there's a swing set. If I want a swing set for my grandkids, I put one in my backyard. Mm -hmm. I don't have one in my backyard. You know, it, the, they, when the kids, my grandkids come, they want to go over to that park constantly behind me. You know, and like I said, I can't believe, I, trust me, I can't have my windows open in the summertime because the kids are hollering. And that's one thing I don't like, but it, that's what I get living where I live. But I mean, that's, it's, unbelievable amount of use it gets and we ended up buying that second lot back when the crunch there was a crowd I remember we bought that other lot next to it but we bought it like dirt cheap yeah it was like a twenty thousand twenty two thousand dollar lot we bought for like six grand and that was the only reason we bought it next to that park mm-hmm yeah. it was That's right it's got that open space next to it too. yep because mm -hmm. they were well we were they were the, we were going to do a beach volleyball court there originally there is one there. Still there? Yeah. We don't have sand that. there. It's just on grass. It's on grass. I thought there was sand in there. No. Hmm. I thought there was. But, I, you know, I, I mean, there's a lot of things I, I I, don't agree with a lot of things. One of the things that they want to see, they want to see us have a beach volleyball set up. <sighs> Who's going to use I, I understand that. I'd like to see the community people get what they want. But I also look at it now we're maintaining that for somebody, a family just go over there and play where some of these people want to, you know, play practice or whatever for their leagues. You know, Wintergreens has got one, you know, the bowling alley's got one. I'm like, I, I just don't know if I want to put money into something like mm -hmm. that. It's kind of the same thing, so. I had another question about the CI bike walk trail. So I see every year, in the budget, there's seventy five hundred dollars that goes towards that. I was wondering what that was like. What that did? I don't know if Matt has any better idea or. That I can speak on that. So okay. that is um, every year we contribute. That is part of our agreement. Um, it is for ongoing maintenance. Cambridge is a fiscal holder. That's why you see an exact seventy five hundred. They um, have the the bucket of money over in Cambridge, and then they just share with us expenditures that come out of it. So they do they maintain our trails in Isani then? They maintain up to where it comes in off of um, that dirt road of Jackson. No, not Jackson. Uh, 200 and, uh, what's the dirt road north of the? I think it's 330. 330. Oh. I don't know if that's right. It's just south of the end of the bridge. Yes, yeah, so okay. they maintain all that. So if there's seal coating, bolts that need to be, boards replaced, um, they use that money to pay for that. Now, if they run out of money, then they let us know. but that we keep contributing that there so they can save it up and we have to do like big project replacements. There's, okay. Yeah, and there'll be big ones coming down the road. Yep. The, they've been replacing a lot of the boards on the bridge and, um, but the, the legs that are sunk into the, in the water, they're, they're gonna have to be replaced eventually and that's gonna be. Just yeah, boardwalks are expensive, really expensive, yep. But that was that was all that agreement with yeah. Cambridge when they built that bike trail or okay. walk trail. I feel like last year they had to clear a bunch of trees. You remember that, Matt? Was that, was that yep. last year? They did some did some logging some trees alongside the trail last year. That was brought up at that that meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Mayor Gordon goes to those meetings. That one, one, no. once a year. And now it's me now. One year you even covered it for me. Yeah. I missed yeah. an entire year of meetings. Yeah. <laughs> It's me now, and I, and I went to the meeting, and there wasn't really anybody there, so I didn't couldn't answer. There really isn't. There, Miss Wood and I were at that meeting. There really wasn't a lot going on, so it's basically just saying what where the money's being spent. That's about it. it. I mean, not to say that any meeting doesn't have great purpose, because it does, but it is a formality of when that first was established that all players come to the table: the Sandy Township, Cambridge Township, the cities the county, everybody come to the table and have a place to be able to voice a concern about the trail if they have it. Okay. Any other items on the CIP list at this time? That's all I had. 
All right, uh, D3, these are past council established goals. Uh, there really isn't anything that I have for discussion on here. This is just for you to have relevant information of things that have come through of council um, that have been uh, the goals and initiatives. And then we will move on to the next item. Unless anybody had questions on those previous goals, um, I encourage you to look that over. There, there might be some topics that you um, have questions on of what we got completed on those, and you can definitely send me an email and I can answer those, and those can always come back around if you think that um, they're worthy of being discussed again. Uh, the next item is our 2023 city staffing plan. This is currently what we have um, in for um, full-time, part-time, and also includes our seasonal staff. If you have any questions, you can let me know. Uh, the only planned position that we have added, or plan to have added and what's in the budget for 2023 is the utility manager position for in public works. Um, public works has done a fantastic job of making sure that they get everything done. And as probably all of you know now, um, public works does everything. Uh, whether it's water, sewer, streets, parks. Uh, we don't have divided team and we find that it's very important to keep the continuity of our utilities. And so that position is in the budget this year, then that'll come forward um, this spring. I have a question about that one. Uh, Matt, so on that one, what is that utility manager gonna be doing? Is he gonna be doing like the water testing? Like I think Jim is doing that now, is that? Um, the thought process is right now with the way he, Jim is in there, utilities in there one day a week. and the water and the wastewater, the water we're pumping now is more so than we've ever pumped and we're hitting record levels every year. Same with wastewater, there's just a lot to oversee, a lot happening in that area that Jim just, one day a week is enough for him. Okay. City's growing and using mm -hmm. more. <laughs> right, oh absolutely. Yeah. And we do find, um, which and Jim has been able to do a fantastic job being there and the other staff too in their time, but having that time to dedicate to making sure the bugs are working in the ponds. And I mean, it really does keep costs down from chemicals and having, we don't want a pond to turn over. Mm -hmm. It's not friendly to our neighboring residents with the odor. I, that takes its science and it mm -hmm. really does take someone babysitting them all the time. Um, so we've, we've done really well stretching things thin to this point and we think that that's gonna be a big benefit to the city. Uh, then next going on is we're going to start our goal setting uh, discussion items. If you have any items that are not included, we will add those at the end and we'll go through these. Uh, just a reminder that we don't have, we cannot take any action. This is just a workshop. This is similar to committee discussions. You can provide direction, um, whether it's to look more into this. Uh, the consensus is that yes, we want staff to spend their time and resources on this. Um, but if we're looking at cutting or adding things to the budget, those will take council decisions. So we will bring all these things or whatever is decided as a whole, because we'll ask you to um, put them in a priority order at the end. Those things will go back through council for um, possible action. So the first one that we have is the residential leaf uh, pickup that uh, Councilmember Merrill had brought up there. Uh, so the city of North Branch does collect leaves in the fall. Residents are able to put them along the curb line and then the city has now two uh, leaf back units. It sounds like the residents really enjoy it, love it, um, ha appreciate it, um, having those leaves picked up. Uh, for the city to consider doing this, it would take a new piece of equipment, something that we don't have. Uh, Matt was able to reach out from the public works director in North Branch and their most recent purchase was last year for this leaf, leaf vac unit and it was 225,000. They anticipate about $3,500 in annual maintenance. Um, there was a question about, well, how much would it cost for staff time? It's just hourly wage. We would use one of our maintenance technicians as part of their, um, one of the tasks that they do. Um, and we, as I said, we would still need to maintain the, the sweeper that we have for the ongoing um, stormwater and street scenes that we have, as this unit is really specific for picking up leaves. Can that, can that funds come out of the stormwater fund? Funds could be utilized. Uh, we do have some funds sitting in the stormwater, but um, it really would be taking funds away from one, funds that we have set aside for um, what we, I anticipate there to be legislative action and mandates that'll come our way for MS4 requirements and things are getting stricter on um, stormwater control. So we do have some money in there. If you use that and then the mandates come, you will have to find money and, and po possibly raise rates for that. 
Now I know like last year, our neighbor over here, he was blowing all his leaves into the street and that's a taboo to start with. And then you see a lot of grass clippings going in and all that stuff goes down the storm water and great public works workers have to go out and clean all that crap out. And then we also have the, uh, the compost site and that's, I mean, that's staff sometimes. So I don't know, I mean, there's costs involved with that too. So I don't know if long-term you, I mean, obviously you have a big investment, 225,000. I don't know if long-term you'd see the, if you'd see the payback on your investment by not having to staff the compost site, I don't. The only thing I would say about the compost site is I know we get a lot of great feedback on grass clippings and we get a lot of grass clippings. And because this unit, from my understanding, they just go around in the fall to pick up the leaves. What are people gonna do with their grass clippings throughout the summer? Okay, I know some, do some cities do do grass as well, but I, I mean, that's, that's a whole nother can of worms, but I don't know, I just thought it'd be interesting to kind of look at it because I mean, you're paying someone to sit at that lot I mean, I don't know how much they're actually sitting there. Part-time. Right. Part that's a retired, retired part-time guy. guy that sits in there. It's not like it's a million-dollar venture. Right. That's why the hours are limited to where they are, and they're open, they we, open so many hours. We have yeah. been fortunate of being able to hire seasonal, so they're not making the our technician wages. Okay. Um, so they're around the $14, $15 an hour wage. Okay, the yeah. piece of equipment, you got to look at the lifespan of that. Right, yeah. right, of course, yep. I mean, say it's 20 years, that's, you know, roughly $10,000 a year in, you know, depreciable asset. And then you got $3,500 annual maintenance. So, you know, $25,000. That's if that's nothing that's breaks. A, that, that's maybe within the first few years after that piece of equipment ages. You can you can spend up to thirty grand a year. Right, yep. On a piece of equipment at that time, now it's only worth fifty grand. Mm -hmm. You're spending thirty grand to keep it on the road. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you put it in the CIP 20 years down the road, you have $250,000 piece of equipment over that 20 years, you put 100 grand into it. And then a new one at that point is going to be about $500,000. Yep. So, you know, so we're, we're looking to hire a new position for, for public works. Um, instead of having that, that part-time or seasonal, could you have that person or someone in public works that's already there do that role so that, I mean, you're kind of eliminating compost roll yeah so you're kind of eliminating part of that extra cost but you're adding more cost with the you know what i mean so the compost site is open on evenings and weekends um okay for the most part i mean we do have uh, do we have any days besides weekends it's just evening so you would be paying i mean you could hire a position it would be outside the realm of the union positions that we have now um to adjust their schedule i mean I don't know why you would want to pay someone over twice as much money to do a task. I mean, not to say that their seasonals aren't valuable, but you're not paying them. Uh, they're paid le less than half of what our maintenance technicians are doing because they have licenses and they're skilled okay. operators. I, I didn't sure. take the skilled position to do it. Okay, I, I guess I thought it was open during more business hours, but I, I, don't, I don't use it, so no. I wasn't sure. And we okay. did, I mean, the, the, uh, another option I don't know how viable it is, is to not staff it at all, which we had that, but I will let you know that that is why we closed it down. Yep, I remember. Because of lots of trash. Mattresses. Yep, I remember. Mattresses, I remember. And, and then you're paying the cost to dispose of that. And, yep. and you yep. got yeah. everybody in the county yep, I know. bringing it now, and this guy's like. He checks you, IDs. <laughs> you, don't, you don't live in the city of Isani. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yep. In which that, you know. I wish, I, I don't know if, you, you don't take brush here anymore, do you? Only when you have a storm. Uh, yeah, we don't take brush unless there'd be a really bad storm to come through town. We have or we're resident there. Our own. There. When people call me, I tell them to go up to the transfer station. They take brush or go down to off the bar down there, central land station, they take brush. Yeah, I just, I just brought this up. I wasn't sure if anybody else would be for or even, you know, just talk about the idea potentially, maybe down the road or something, I don't know. Because I know all the cities are doing it, and it is nice, but it's not. I mean, it's obviously it's not necessary. But I just rather we, we spend two hundred some thousand dollars on a piece of equipment. I'd rather spend it on something that's used year round. Right. Yeah, like something for like, like a grass clippings too. I don't know. I didn't know enough about it. I just thought it was interesting, and people have been asking about it. So there's, there's with this MS4 stuff is getting thicker and thicker. They're going to be salt restrictions before you know it. They're going to be outfitting their plow trucks with brine tanks, I'm sure, in the future, and all that costs money. Mm -hmm, right. Um, just to use less salt. So, and there's that's a lot of that stuff coming down sure. the pipeline that the state's not 
going to say, here's money so you can do it. The state's going to say, do it, do it, or you lose your LGA funds, and that's a big hit. I mean, that's why we went to strictly mostly salt, because then they didn't have to sit and sweep the streets all spring long because it's full of sand. Mm -hmm. And it's just safer. Yeah, and it's safer. And not, no, no, they're saying you can't use too much salt. <laughs> North Dakota, they use sugar beet juice instead of salt. Wisconsin, they use the brine from all the cheese factories. If, if the council is interested in having it explored more, um, I would say probably you would want to let me or staff, Mike, know by July because we are looking at rates this year, um, water, sewer, storm rates. That'll be implemented for 2024. Uh, so as we start evaluating those, this would be something we would want to know before rolling something out because that cost has to be distributed amongst the years. Yep. Matt, do you think it would be any benefit to, to Public Works to have something like that? Maybe there'd be less clippings going through the sewer water. I mean, is there any real benefit that you could see out of it? Or is it strictly just a luxury amenity? I, I think it's a luxury amenity for okay. a resident more so than it is anything for Public Works. It'd just be more for them to do. Okay. I don't think there'd be a benefit. I mean, the people that blow grass pull things out on the road now, you know, I don't, I don't think that they're going to rake on the edge of the road and wait for the trucks to come by. Sure. That's more or less how it works. They get up the edge of the road and the trucks are by and he sucks it up and then goes to the next lot and just goes down the road. Okay. Luke, uh, I actually asked for this to be put on as well. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so I, 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 I had asked about it a couple of years ago too because I was over delivering pizzas in North Grants and people do put it at mm -hmm. the edge of the road and I was like, what is going on? What are these people doing? And that's what they were doing was, was getting it ready for the, the public works to come by and grab it. But um, and you, Josie and I had talked about this recently and we were thinking that we could get a new street sweeper that also did this so that they could actually hit it in the same pass as when they were sweeping the sweep, doing the street sweeping anyway. And I guess that 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 was before that Matt didn't. talked to their public works director. It's gotcha. a whole different unit. So you really can't use the, a different style of street sweeper to, to do this function as well. And because that would, that way it wouldn't cost any extra time or you know, if we're going to replace that equipment anyway in the future, we could just replace it with that kind. But, but if that's not an option, then I don't see us spending that kind of money to, to do it. I'd love to do it. I mean, I'd, I agree. I, I think, think, I think awesome this is an item that should be, I don't think it necessarily has to be put on the list, but I think it's something that to keep in mind, keep in mind, but also we got to lock what, watch what MS4 is going to do. I, mean, I like that idea too. I mean, it's stormwater stuff. I mean, if you got money in there, for but it, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe more. that's something we can, at some point we can maybe tweak that a little bit, mm -hmm. but, with all these regulations, with the stormwater runoffs, we don't have a choice. They're, they're gonna tell us, this is what you're gonna do and you don't like it, too bad. Like Councilman Collison said, I, I think that we should need to, they're not gonna come up and say, tomorrow it needs to be done. They're gonna give us some time, but I think with something maybe we should look at, maybe, maybe there's some other things in the budget, this upcoming budget, when we set the budget for next year, we can be, we can tweak a little bit here and start putting something aside for that future. Because I, I'd be, I'll be willing to bet you inevitably it's going to come down the pipe. We're going to have to do it. Mm -hmm. I just don't. Let's not do it now. Yep. Unless, but I think we should I keep it in the radar. Well, for picking up weeds, yeah. that'll be something that'll always be homeowners' responsibility. The state will never make us handle their weeds or their grass. We never thought they'd make us do a lot of things that we had to do. <laughs> Stormwater runoff ponds and how we had to. That was originally was turned over to the homeowners to maintain, and they never did it. So now we end up taking it over and doing it. I just thought it was interesting enough to bring up to talk about potential. Yeah. You know, who knows? I mean, I didn't know any of the figures. I didn't know if it was fifty thousand dollars for a vacuum truck. I had no. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think Matt and I talked about it when we did a couple of years ago. We thought, well, what if we get even just a used truck to do it? And I think oh, even that was one hundred and fifteen thousand bucks for a used truck. And then yeah, of course that's someone else's problem. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. You don't want to. You don't no. want to do that anyway. No. So, so even even then, I don't know if I ever did bring it to council at that time, but I even that was, you know, maybe we're spending a hundred thousand dollars on it. Yep. If you needed the equipment anyway, then yeah, it might be something you'd you'd upgrade to that piece. But I mean, that's not that's not something the the truck that you guys use, the the big truck that's in the corner of a public works. What is that called again? That yeah, pump truck? The jet, the jet truck. Jet that's truck. That that can't be outfitted at all to do anything. Okay. Liquids. Okay, so that's just a one. Okay. Well, some solids. Well, some sand. <laughs> Depends on what you're doing that day. Right. Okay. <laughs> Not leaves. <laughs> Not leaves. Not leaves, though. No. no. 
So what does that truck look like, even, the, the big vac truck that North Branch or any city has? Is it a, just a big old dump truck with a vacuum on it, or? Do they use the crosswind? Is that what they use? No, it, it looks a lot like, it looks, it does look something like the Jetter truck, but it's rigged up differently. So it's rigged up with a boom that just basically has a big vac that just goes right down the shoulder of the road, and the guy in the cab can kind of motor that around and just hover it over this leaf pile. And, and it's got it a grinder, and then Old Dominion Brush Company was the name of it. Old Dominion? Brush Company Collector. And that just seems like a lot of a lot of money for a pretty, I think it's a pretty basic task, isn't it? I it sounds too basic. Oh. Think of that well, back you're, truck. You're, you're a mechanic. Yeah, right, if right. If it has wheels, it's mechanical. Uh, I know it's expensive. It's going to cost you money. Right. And right it's going to break down. Yeah, right now, uh, just a, like a, if you wanted to order a cabin chassis before it even is outfitted. With I mean, I'm just thinking, like, use the plow, use a plow truck for it and <coughs> outfit it with a vacuum. Like, we already have the plow trucks, and they're already just sitting there in fall anyway. That's That was my thought. I mean, like. They do make vacuum trailers, I think, too, if I remember right. Uh, but I think that would be really a hassle to just mess around with that. <laughs> you go up half a block a and you gotta go all the way back to the compost site to dump yeah. it. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I mean. So we have a small vacuum trailer that we pull around to get leaves in the park, um, very small. I mean, you could just blow that up, and but again, I don't think it's gonna be less than a few hundred thousand dollars. I mean, a, I don't, a plow truck, that is a pretty big box. I mean, you could fit a lot of leaves if they're ground up It'd in a plow spray. truck. Oh, I, I know, obviously, it'd be multiple trips, but. I mean, if that would be, I would think that would be what, maybe, I don't know, someone's got to be doing something crafty like that because nobody's going to, nobody wants to spend 225 grand where you got 50 trucks sitting there, not 50, but, you know, six, what is it, six plow trucks sitting there unused at that time? Uh, we have three plow trucks. Okay, it's three. I mean, I don't know if that. Well, and we it's, sometimes it's use possible them for hauling dirt, like but that. gravel. <laughs> I guess share that on a, on a truck like this, it's not going into, like, a box on a dump truck. It's going into like a tank, so you can imagine. And Dan, you could try to assist me. You can fill if it. Something more. does that. It's packed in there tight. Our trailer monitor unit that we use in the parks, it shreds the leaves, and when it goes in there, you couldn't put that many in there. It's got to go through the fan, and they get shredded. So, this is the same thing. It would shred these leaves up when they Correct. go in there. They're they're coming out in a ball. Yep. Where a truck that it's going to be, it'll just blow it down. I mean, I would think if you got a shredder in the line of the vacuum is what I'm saying, and it shreds it into your truck box. Cause you can, I mean, shredded leaves, you can fit a lot in a, in a, in a box. You know, I can clean my whole yard with one truck box if they're mowed first. And I have a almost two acre yard with trees. So, I mean, I'd, I think that'll be interesting to look into that. I don't know, maybe I can do that on my own time, but I think that'd be interesting. Cause you have the plow truck sitting there and that'd be a lot cheaper investment. I don't know. And then to pull a trailer behind the plow truck. The no, when you, when you need a trailer, I mean, I'm saying that's going to be a trailer unit that blows it back into the plow truck, right? No, no. I was thinking have something built. There's got to be a company that makes a vacuum you can attach to a truck, just an auxiliary vacuum that you, you know, maybe it bolts to the side of the truck bed. You know, I don't, there's got to be a way. I've never of, seen anything like that. Um, okay. You know, and then you can just, you know, mount it in the fall. Oh, like, I thought you were talking about pulling a trailer. No, not a trailer. Just a unit that, you know, like a receiver hitch type thing that it, I would think it'd be pretty simple. I, I don't know. Maybe no one's ever done it, but it's not out of the question. I've never maybe I'll have to invent that. <laughs> I've never seen one for the back of a plow truck like that. Well, if that comes back up, um, you know, we can ex explore it. I, I I'll look, I'll look into that myself. Moving on to number two is finalizing the concept of the splash pad. So uh, Jordan Clementson has provided some information in front of you this evening. This has some um, <coughs> images as well as costs. He's also going to talk about um, what our obligations are with the grant and how that impacts possible direction that um, council may give. So I'm gonna let Jordan take it over and thank yeah. you. Thanks. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, so I got a couple different uh, options. Um, so there's two different ones that I have listed here that were pretty recent po projects. Um, first one is uh, from the city of Becker, Minnesota, and it's a 2,100 square foot uh, splash pad. Um, it's a drained away system, so the water it does not get recirculated or treated. It just goes right down in the sewer system or the stormwater uh, system. 
Um, and then options two and three, it's the same uh, footprint and it's just different bathroom structure. Uh, but that one's from the city of Worthington um, and that's a 3,500 square foot. That's also drained to waste. Um, and then the, the couple different bathroom options, um, they're like prefab buildings that they get shipped here and we gotta, comes with the crane to drop it in place. Um, so with that being said, um, the, the DNR grant that we have, um, we put in for, we got $300,000 from the state of Minnesota and that, well, that is with a $436,000 match from the city of Isani. Um, and I was on the phone with the DNR just to clarify and just make sure we had the right information. Um, and so we have to spend that $436,000 in order to get the $300,000 from the state. Um, and understanding like we have all these things bid out here, you're kind of line itemed out. Um, and that's kind of what we've put in our application. Um, and so that's kind of what they're expecting to see. Uh, if we need to make any changes to our application, it's not a guarantee that they would accept it. Uh, and if we change the scope of the project too much, um, they said that we risk kind of losing out on any of the grant funding um, just because it's, it was a competitive grant process. So other towns are putting in for projects and they scored our project based upon what we had put in the grant application. Um, and so with that being said, we kind of had a couple different options. Um, so the, our, our grant application called for like a 3,000 square foot uh, splash pad and the, the bathroom building. Uh, with six stalls, a plumb facility, um, with flush toilets and everything. Um, so that's kind of what we had bid out. But then the, the other option was, you know, if we, for whatever reason, decided to forego the grant completely uh, and still wanted to tackle doing a splash pad project, that one from the city of Becker, um, I kind of have the cost laid out there. You'll notice most of the costs are the same uh, for the infrastructure because we have to bring in the water we have to uh, put in the drainage system, um, do the site prep. So a lot of those costs are the same regardless of what option you're going with. Um, and if we do the standalone project um, and we decided to forego a restroom or and put in vault toilets instead of fl um, flush toilets, um, you know, we, we would have a little bit higher cost in uh, bringing the water in because we had kind of shared that cost in this proposal with bringing the water in for the bathrooms and then from the bathrooms it would get tied in the splash pad but if we didn't have flush toilets it would just go right from the closest water point we have to the park um, so that's why that cost is a little bit higher and highlighted in yellow um, and basically they like they said we kind of have to put we have to do what we put in the bid we can ask for a change order um, like I have different bathroom options so a six stall is what we put in the in our application so there's another four stall bathroom that's a little bit cheaper and we might be able to save some there and have them say yes to that. But if we, we put in there, that was gonna be a plumb facility. If we say, hey, can we take it out and put in a vault toilet? That kind of completely changes the scope of the project, which then kind of puts the funding at risk from the state. So the question I have for you, if we went to the four stall toilet bathroom, would that, would that meet our requirements that we would need for that? Uh, when I talked to them on the phone, they said something like that would probably be okayed. It would have to be okayed by the Minnesota DNR and then also um, the federal government. It's kind of funded through the Par National Park Service as well. So both entities would have to sign off on the change order. And that bathroom price is including the plumbing, doing the plumbing and everything? Um, it, it's a prefab building. So everything is there. We would just have to do the site work um, to bring the, the water and the sewer. I'd like to there. look at a different option on that. Mm -hmm. My I, company that I work for, and I've talked to them, would probably donate the plumbing fixtures. I would do the work for nothing. That's a lot of money. It is. I was, I was thinking the same thing. I'd, I but now, I got a question for you, Matt. It says on here, uh, grinder pump force main. Are you talking about like an E1 pump? Is that what we're talking? Yeah. I would have to do some checking and see what we can get that for. We, they probably wouldn't donate the E1, right? that's pretty expensive. So, but there is, there is options on E1s. Is this restroom gonna be operated in the winter also? No. Because then we, you know, I mean, technically if we put an E1 in there, unless it's inside the building and it's heated, we'd have to get an outdoor one that's insulated. I've, 
I would have to look and see. We, I can still get some different options. We're not necessarily going with an E1, but a different tank with a grinder pressurized system. So that being said, I would, I can probably, I just have to have the numbers for my owner of my company. And I've already approached him about that. And he said, that's very possible I'd do that. He would donate the plumbing fixtures and materials and I would do the work for free. Do we have to use flush valves? Can we use flush tanks? I don't think that was specifically, it, it would just at the, you know, let them know, hey, we're changing the plan. This is why, and have it not affect the overall budget too much. Um, like you said, if it if it completely changes the scope of the project, then we risk losing the funding. But also that we have to spend, where the contract we have that we've already signed says the city of Isani has to contribute four hundred thirty-six thousand dollars to the project to get the three hundred thousand from the state, um, and so some of that can be in kind. Yeah, we'd have to see it. Did you happen to ask about the in kind part of it? There might be a certain percentage that we can do in kind, but because these are all rough numbers, it might be very beneficial to have some of it donated because some of it might come in higher than. Oh yeah, it's going to. So, so anyway, just so we all were on the same page, no matter what we did, we're going to have to sell out. So without the grant, we're going to have to sell out four hundred fifty-three thousand, right? Right. With the grant going to thirty-five hundred square foot, option two. Let's just step to option two. So that total package is seven hundred twenty-four thousand. So we'd end up paying four hundred twenty-four thousand, right? Out of that seven hundred, yeah, <laughs> that's almost a no-brainer. Just go with the grant, go with a bigger building because there's going to be less money to start with. Plain and simple. I mean, I I think once we, I need to get final details. I need to get information from my owner of the company to to look at what he wants to do there. Uh, so I'm going to tell you right now, it's, we're going to be far less cheaper by twenty some thousand dollars to go with option two. I guess I, I think personally, um, I know grant, is this grant available again next year? Um, I mean, can you can you reapply? I mean, in the future because I, I these are huge numbers and I, I, I just. So I think the uh, Stephanie had found out. You know, if we turn back what we already have accepted, that it would be a hindrance to us in the future getting grants from the state because we've yeah, taken all the staff yeah. time from the state level, our staff time, and it's just kind of it's a bad reflection on, on the city. Correct, it's not, it, you can't say it with definite certainty, but it's unlikely that you would get awarded if you declined it. Um, but we don't have to use it until next year. So we wouldn't have to decline it this year if we were thinking that we may do it next year, because isn't it, it has to be completion by next next year. I have the contract here, but um, expiration date um, December thirty first, two thousand twenty four. So there is a little bit more time. I don't know if that will help us with costs, but no. At the end of the year, here at our Truth and Taxation meeting, what we decided to do was use the park dedication funds that we had available and limit our our expense for the splash pad to that because we can only use those for new equipment and not maintenance, which was what I think Mike thought we could use it for maintenance, and that's why this money was scheduled to come from other places. But um, how much is in that park dedication fund? So we have approximately 325000 rounding it. Uh, that puts us in the hole of about 111000 We do have some things that are coming down the pipeline that are not public information yet that we do think that we'll start filling that pot back up. Um, but we would need to go into the hole about 111,000. And that's that's assuming we drain that fund, so we can we'll have using the whole fund. We'll have zero money to do any parks, ever for a long well, time. You also got to remember, Legacy Park was built. That drain. It went into the negative on that. It property. went into the negative, and it just cost the, and it cost the taxpayers. Out. The taxpayers have to pay this money back. And, well, and well, this was the sort of, but it could come park up. Park the taxpayers don't pay right, the park dedication fees. Well, and this is already this is actually already on the budget. I, I know it is, but, but I, you got to realize Legacy Park. That money. I wanted to go over Bluebird Park. I'm not main, naming names, but a certain person. Said no, I want that park. And that's what he diverted it all to, and then it was misleading. I mean, that's that's what's going to happen now. I mean, we're on city council, and people are going to see this money being spent, and they're going to say the same thing about this project. I mean, there's no we, this, we don't this, have. To, this is 
This is all transparent. That wasn't. Okay, no, it's still a lot of money, though. We don't have to have. What Josie's saying, too, is that, right, and we could dip into the general fund to, to float this. If, you, if there's something that we can't really talk about now coming up that will build this balance back up. We would wait for those projects to come in, whether it be development, um, residential development projects that have to par pay park dedication fees or other commercial projects coming in. We would let it sit in the red until the bucket got filled up by development that's paying park dedication funds. We wouldn't borrow from Fund 920 or General Fund. Okay, we wouldn't, we would just leave it in the We would just let it. I guess I would just like to see a more efficient approach because, you know, $200,000 for bathrooms is a lot. You know, the I mean, I don't know, I didn't realize that it has to be a flushable toilet for the grant or whatever, but, you know, the county, when it, when we put in, we put in a, a vault toilet with the building and, and a uh, sand point well or whatever, and it was like $70,000. That's a third of the price. You can't put sand wells in anymore. Yeah, well, I, either way, I, I, I just, we only have one approach to, we only have one opportunity to spend this money. I'd really like to spend it right because, I mean, a lot of these numbers just seem like a lot of money. And I, I don't know, that's, that's, well, that's my opinion. I know people want it, but I mean, we're not Minnetonka, we're not a diner. We have 7,000 people here that have to split this cost. And why should, we don't really need a Cadillac of a, I, I mean, I get it with the funding, but it just. Cadillac, you should have saw the first one that they were looking at. Yeah. Well, it's still th three quarters of a million still, dollars. It's still, you're still looking at, if you went but with the first one. 300,000 of that isn't our money. Yeah. Well, it's still, it's still our money. We still all pay for it. No, it's still it's all grand. taxpayer money. No, it's grand. If we it's don't taxpayer use it, money. Uh, it goes to another city that will use it, and right. then you still pay for it anyway. But and now then it's you're not, not benefiting town. from it. Right. I, it, it, possibly the building is a little high. It's a package building. I mean, we have time to quote it out doing it a different style.